This is a story about a teenage girl named Katniss who lives in District 12 of a post-apocalyptic North America called Panem. She lives with her mother and younger sister Prim as they struggle to find food and survive in such tough conditions. Each year, as part of a punishment for a previous rebellion, each of the districts selects a boy and girl as tributes to compete in the Hunger Games, a battle royale with one survivor. Prim gets selected, but Katniss quickly volunteers to take her place, becoming one of the tributes for District 12, along with Peta, the baker's son. Katniss and Peta are transported to the capital to be trained by their coach, Hamish, a drunkard. But Hamish is clever and proposes a strategy to fake a romantic relationship between Katniss and Peta. Katniss and Peta are dressed by their stylist, Cinna, who adorns them with flames for the opening ceremony. As they are paraded around the arena, the audience cheers. Over the next few days, each of the tributes train with specialized trainers, learning survival and combat skills. At the end of the training, each tribute is given a rating to help potential sponsors and betting. Peter earns an 8, while Katniss earns an 11. As they prepare to enter the arena, Hamish tells them that their best chance at surviving is to immediately run away when the game starts. All of the contestants are then transported to the arena, and the gong signals that the Hunger Games have begun. Immediately, Katniss is engulfed in a scene of killing, as several of the contestants are attacked by stronger tributes. Katniss reaches for a backpack and then runs towards the woods to hide. She is fortunate that her backpack has some basic survival supplies, but she lacks water. As tributes are killed, a cannon is fired to indicate their death. Katniss continues to search for water, and it looks like she'll die of dehydration. She eventually finds water, but sees a group of strong tributes working together, which she calls the Careers. With them is Peta. The Careers, led by a boy named Kato, trap Katniss in a tree, but she decides to drop a nest of tracker jackers, an insect with powerful venom, on the group. The swarm kills two of the girls, scares the rest away, and allows Katniss to escape, though she is stung a few times. Katniss decides to take a bow and arrow set from one of the dead girls. Peta helps her escape Kato, but she is confused. She walks away but succumbs to the venom of the tracker jackers and falls asleep. When she wakes up, she collects herself and meets Rue, a small girl with acrobatic skills and trees. They decide to work together against the careers by destroying their supplies and food. As Rue lights a series of fires in the distance, Katniss destroys the supplies by setting off the surrounding landmines. However, she loses hearing in one ear. She tries to meet up with Rue, but Rue is killed by one of the careers. Katniss avenges her, but it's already too late. An announcement is made that will allow two victors of the Hunger Games if they come from the same district, which means that both Peta and Katniss can win. This drives Katniss to find Peta, who is injured badly with a leg wound. Katniss takes care of Peter's wounds in a nearby cave, and the two of them begin to get romantic with each other. The audience watching loves it and expresses their approval with a gift of food. As Peter recovers, another announcement is made that each district will be given supplies at the Cornucopia, a center place in the arena. Since it's dangerous, Peter doesn't want Katniss to go, but she drugs him and goes alone. She tries to recover her supplies at the Cornucopia, but is attacked by one of the careers. Just as Katniss is about to be killed, another tribute saves her, repaying her for helping Rue. Katniss goes back to the cave and uses the newly acquired serum in her supply pouch to save Peta. Peta recovers and the two decide to leave the cave. As they are gathering and hunting food, one of the other tributes, a girl Katniss names Foxface, unknowingly eats poisonous berries that Peta was gathering. That leaves only three remaining, Katniss, Peta, and Kato. Katniss and Peta go to the cornucopia to find Kato, and he shows up, but he's being chased by mutated dogs. Katniss realizes that the dogs are actually the tributes that were previously in the Hunger Games. They leave Kato to the dogs and he's killed. Katniss and Peta are the last two tributes alive. However, an announcement is made that there can only be one winner, but the decision is then reversed when Katniss and Peta try to poison themselves. Katniss and Peta are declared the winners and are taken back to the capital. Hamish warns Katniss that their suicide stunt was not appreciated by the Hunger Game officials. 
Katniss and Peeta are interviewed and eventually get to go home. In the end, Peeta discovers that Katniss was being coached to pretend to like him while he truly felt those feelings. As always, a lot can be said about this story, but what draws my interest and attention is the idea of illusion and what this story says about our society's willingness to cover up the truth with images that aren't true. As soon as Katniss enters the capital, she notices all of the fake people covering up themselves, such as the women with dyed hair and makeup. Everything seems artificial and set up. No one seems comfortable and natural, unlike her conditions in District 12, where she hunts freely and can be herself. As Katniss prepares for the Hunger Games, she soon realizes that her prep team is changing her by waxing her hair and fitting her in costumes and outfits that she wouldn't necessarily wear. Interestingly, Katniss resists at first but then sees herself in the arena and likes what she sees. In fact, her survival during the game relies on a clever illusion of a romantic relationship with Peeta. So while I'm not yet convinced that Katniss hasn't entirely bought into the paradigm of the capital, that she hasn't gone all Hollywood, she is willing to play the game so to speak. Not only does she win the Hunger Games, but also manages to fool the audience into believing that she loves Peeta. However, as I'm sure the other books pursue, a person can stay with one foot in both the illusion and what they perceive as real. Eventually, Katniss will have to choose to either reject the illusion and stand up for truth as she sees it, or allow the illusion that she is delving into to become her new truth. So, let me know what you think about the story in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Minute Book Reports, and thanks for watching.